All right. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, I really thank you for attending today. Um, I really want to thank the Iowa Forage and Grassland Council uh, for having me here today. Uh, my name is Billy Beck. I'm the Extension Forestry Specialist with Iowa State University Extension and Outreach. Very excited today to visit with you about uh, how to know the true value uh, of your forest, it's kind of a primer uh, for ag producers and, and grazers in Iowa. All right. Again, very excited to be here. Uh, I do have a bit of a, a grazing background, and I'm absolutely fascinated uh, by grazing, and that kind of stems back to uh, my time as a field forester in Kansas with the Kansas Forest Service. I kind of jokingly tell people that is a real thing. Um, but seriously, every landowner we worked with, and very similar in Iowa too, owned cattle, had a grazing operation. They had timber, they had cattle. And I just kind of saw all kinds of really fascinating and innovative ways that um, they were grazing to protect water quality, to protect the forest, um, and just uh, really neat and, and really got me interested in, in, in connecting with that group. So when I came to Iowa, I really wanted to reach out uh, to the grazers, and this is an awesome opportunity. So I really appreciate you all for having me. So a lot of times when I work with those folks, they do have timber on their property. This is a shot from you know, any farm in Southern Iowa here. Um, they've got a lot of potential for hardwood production, but it's just not achieved, um, primarily due to lack of forest management. And folks don't really manage their forests for a variety of reasons, but um, there's just a lot of potential out there that I think is not being reached, um, primarily due to lack of management. So that's kind of the goal today. There's no way we're going to cover the whole realm of forest management, but I just want to introduce some concepts and get you thinking about some things um, that you can do at your place to kind of maximize the return you get uh, from, from your timber. So, um, yeah, for today, um, really, I want to introduce myself and my background and then share with you my vision uh, for this position and my extension research program and then kind of get into a quick kind of crash course, a forestry primer uh, for you all. Uh, three big things I want to hit on today. We've only got 30 minutes. So again, this is kind of just giving you um, some things to think about and maybe hopefully inspire you um, to dive deeper into the resources that we're going we're gonna, to um, provide to you in the form of an email um, following up this, this presentation and conference. So keep your eyes open uh, for that. But really, I just want to kind of go over and share with you the, the actual value of Iowa forests uh, to landowners, but to every Iowan. Um, and then get into two topics that really I get asked a lot. Um, a lot, And then most folks really want to know, where the heck do I even start? I've got this timber. I, I'm, I'm so busy with the farm operation. I can't I even ID a tree. Where the heck do I even start? And then secondly, uh, they always ask about, I want to harvest my timber. How do I make that happen? How do I maximize my return for, for my timber harvest? So again, short time today, but I really want to hit on those three things and provide resources to help you get uh, moving down the road um, to get the maximum return and know the true value uh, of your woodlands. We always say in forestry, I got to throw this in there, forestry often involves killing and or harvesting trees and that's, that's okay. So again, I'm Billy Beck. Here's me with no mask on. Um, I am the Extension Forestry Specialist with Iowa State University Extension and Outreach. I'm also an assistant professor in the Department of Natural Resource Ecology and Management at ISU. I'm responsible for forestry extension and education across all of Iowa's 99 counties. And I also do research in the department to kind of fuel that extension. And I also uh, am involved with teaching in the department too. So, uh, for speaking of resources, utilize me. Uh, check out our website, shoot me an email, hit me up on social media. So I encourage you, please um, say hello and uh, get with me uh, with any questions you may have. Real quick about me, I've got a background in forestry and a background in water. Uh, so if you think of me, think trees and water. I really try to work to improve water quality and reduce flooding through active forest management. So I think with this combo here, there's a lot of cool things we can do uh, between forestry and grazing. So like I said, just like back in Kansas, there's a lot of cool collaboration potential there. So really, really quick, 
Uh, again, I'm new. I'm trying to get my, my voice out there and connect with as many folks as I can. I just want to share the vision I had for this position. Uh, and that is that all Iowa forests are valued. And by that, from landowners, I want them to value forests as an on-farm income and asset. And kind of that's what we're going to be focusing on today. And for the state, I want the state of Iowa to recognize forests for the water quality enhancement and flooding uh, reduction impacts that they have. So again, on-farm income and asset, but also at the state level, water quality and flooding. But today, we're talking strictly on-farm income and asset. I get asked this all the time. Even my relatives still don't know really what the heck I do. So I really wanted to throw this out there first. What the heck is forestry? Uh, a lot of people, again, we have a, a blurry concept of what this is. It's something to do with trees. Uh, but forestry is defined by the Society of American Foresters, kind of our home uh, professional group, is the science, art, and business of creating, managing, and conserving forests and associated resources in a sustainable manner to meet desired goals, needs, and values. So this spans urban and rural. There's an urban canopy, there's a rural canopy. I myself focus strictly on rural forest management. Not that I don't think urban's important, it's just I've got to focus on rural forests exclusively to really be effective. So in a nutshell, we manage these forest lands to provide economic, societal, and all the ecosystem services gains that we get uh, from timbered landscapes. So everything from water quality, wildlife, clean air, carbon sequestration, aesthetics, all that great stuff. So um, impress your friends over the holidays with the definition of forestry. This is such a cool picture and it really underscores a point that I'm trying to get out across the landscape and that is that trees, forests, and forestry are a part of Iowa. They're part of our cultural heritage and our history. They're definitely part of our future and every Iowan benefits um, economically even from the forests that we have uh, here in Iowa. Many Iowans do not associate Iowa with trees or forestries and I'm really, really trying to change that by throwing out numbers like this. Uh, we've got 3 million acres of forest, down from about 7 million in the mid-1800s. We've got 150,000 forest landowners. 10 to $35 million of standing timber are sold annually. This should be way higher, and I'll get to that uh, in a little bit. Hopefully you can, you can uh, uh, contribute to that. 24,000 jobs supported, 4.3 billion economic output. The highest quality white oak and black walnut on earth. Uh, this is the coolest one, I think, is that ISU is one of the oldest forestry programs in the U.S. Not the Midwest, but the U.S. I think that's really, really cool. So a rich, rich forestry history in this state. And again, all these forests impact our soil, water, air, aesthetics, recreation, wildlife, pollinators, and especially this year, just a refuge to relax uh, and get away from everything. So again, if you start thinking about Iowa, you got to lump forestry and trees in there with corn and beans and hogs and cattle and all the other good stuff. So, all right, uh, on to kind of the, the three main topics that I wanted to kind of uh, cover with you all today. Uh, again, a lot of folks come to me and say, where the heck do I even start? I'm so busy with the farm. I can't even ID a tree. I'm interested in forest management, but I have no idea where to start. And I always tell them the first thing you should probably do is just start with a vision. Uh, and I'll, I'll share this kind of cool example from this, this farm family here. They came to me, I met them at a watershed group. They were very interested in water quality. But they had all this timber land. They were a larger row crop uh, cattle operation. But they had all this timber land, uh, mostly along streams and rivers. And they said, hey, we want to maximize this. We're not doing anything with it. It's just kind of sitting there. We want to maximize the return on this land. I said, great, that's awesome. But they were like, you know, where the heck do you even start? So I told them to start with a vision. Kind of sit down, even do it in the woods. Get out in the woods and walk around and say, okay, what do you want to get out of this land? What do you want to put in and what do you want to get out? And for them, it came back as they wanted timber revenue. They wanted to protect water quality. They wanted wildlife habitat. They wanted aesthetics or added beauty on the landscape. And they were able to achieve this. And I'll share some tips on how they did that. But they were able to achieve this 
on the same land. All these things were managed for on, on the same land. So, so really, really cool there about starting with a vision about what you want. And this was a neat day. This is this was three generations of of a farmer here, uh, families uh, planting trees. So that was kind of a cool experience to be to be out and involved with. All right. So again, the first step, I really encourage you to get out there and explore your woods, even if you don't have the slightest idea of how to ID trees or what forestry even is. Um, so a good place to start is just to map it. Get out there and start mapping it. And this does not have to be complicated. It can be a pen and paper effort all the way up to kind of some of the more um, advanced mapping apps you can get on your phone. I know people that use Avenza Maps. I know people that use OnX which is generally for hunting, but you can use that to map your forest too. And again, right off the bat, it's critical to bring in a professional forester. I can't say that. If you remember nothing else from today, remember that working with a professional forester is critical for your success. Uh, they're going to be your guide through the entire process. Um, so absolutely, absolutely get these folks involved from the start. And they can help with this mapping. They can help you do it. But I always encourage folks to get out before you meet with the sports store and just, just look and observe and see your own thoughts uh, before you, you have that conversation with them. So start looking at the boundaries. Where are your boundaries at? Mark them. Uh, where are the access points? Where are the roads at? What's the current and past land use? Uh, where are the streams at? Topography, that's always important. Uh, soils, big one. Know what kind of soils you got out there and where those are located. Uh, potential tree planting sites. And again, this does not have to be complicated. Just get a general idea of what's out there and what's going on. And I, I put this up there because I, I deal with landowners that, you know, say, I haven't backed that stand in 10 years. I have no clue what's going on out there. I let somebody hunt back there, but I haven't been back there in a decade. So I really encourage you to just get out there and check out what's going on. So beyond mapping, I really encourage you to kind of evaluate it and identify stuff that's out there. Again, um, Tree species can be tough, but if you got start identifying in general what you got, that's a good thing. Uh, also look at the size. How, what's their diameter? How tall are they? What's their condition? Do they look vigorous? Do they look in decline? Uh, are they really crowded? What's the density of them out there? Is there regeneration? Are there little baby trees, the next generation of forest? Uh, are there invasive species? That one's huge. Uh, are those present out there? Uh, do they look sickly? Is there disease out there? You know, oak wilt, for example. Uh, is there a lot of downed wood? Is there wildlife presence? Another huge one that impacts potential management is there erosion and severe gullying going on. That's really going to impact what you can do out in your woodlands. And again, this is the perfect place to bring in a professional forester. They're going to meet with you. They're going to listen to your objectives and goals for the land. And they're going to work with you to kind of go through this list and um, get you on the path uh, moving forward to maximize this resource. And from there, uh, what that forester is going to help you do is create a forest management plan. And this is absolutely critical. Um, without a plan, you're not maximizing the return for, for your property. This is critical for success. Um, this plan is going to take into account your objectives, your site, your resources, and give you a vision uh, to move and the steps to move forward uh, to meet that vision. So this could take many forms. There's not one standard template for a forest management plan. But again, working with that professional forester, they're going to go in, they're going to inventory your site, they're going to take into account your objectives and your goals for the land, and they're going to create that long-term plan for sustainability uh, for you to move forward and achieve that. So again, if you remember nothing else from today, professional forester and a forest management plan. Uh, these plans are incredibly helpful. They help with decision making. Uh, just real quick example, the 8th, August 10th derecho. Uh, this is an example from Lynn County. This person did have a plan. If you didn't have a plan here, you'd be thinking, now what the heck do I do? But at least if you've got that plan and you got that vision in your mind, you can fall back on that plan and say, okay, this is where we were. This is where we were going. We got set back a bit, but here's the plan. Uh, we're going to start moving forward again using that to, to fall back on. So absolutely critical. Helps with decision making, which is what I love about the plans. They help uh, determine the timing of management practices, like um, forest thinning, for example, and harvest. They help with determining when you should harvest. Uh, they help with monitoring and evaluation. They help you adapt. Um, 
And one cool thing I've noticed with folks too is they really increase their engagement, their curiosity, and their just passion for forestry in general. The more they start learning, the more they become actively involved, um, they just get lit up about forestry and they're, they're really, really excited about it. So it's kind of a neat, neat thing. So forest management plans. All right, so that was really quick about the importance of working with a forester and planning. Uh, the second kind of thing I get uh, asked about, and it's a great question, is timber harvest. I want to harvest my trees, and one of the first questions is, when we're walking around the woods, is what is that tree worth? Uh, what can I get for that tree? Uh, and that is almost an impossible question to answer, and I'll tell you why here. There's so many factors that go into that. If you get 10 different loggers out to look at your woods, you're going to get 10 vastly different uh, bids on that 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 uh, that harvest and that doesn't mean that some of them are trying to cheat and it doesn't mean that some of them got money coming out of their ears or they're willing to throw around there's a lot of factors that go into why a logger bids the way they do um, they could be very very far from the site you know it takes a thousand bucks for them to mobilize that equipment to get there the mill that they're outletting to could be further away than the other person um, they may have a special niche market for hackberry or another kind of unique tree species that the other person doesn't, which may um, have them place a higher bid on that, on that sale. Um, yeah, they may be looking for certain species. Uh, the quality and the grade of the logs may not be what they're looking for. Uh, site access and terrain. They might not have the equipment uh, to effectively harvest your site where the other person might. So it's going to take them five times as long, which is going to up their cost. Um, and all kinds of market politics and tariff stuff that I won't get into today. But um, the point here is that many different loggers are going to give you a different bid for your timber harvest. So I caution you, if somebody comes up and knocks on your door and says, hey, I'll give you 25000 bucks for that chunk of timber back there, you're thinking, oh my gosh, 25000 bucks that's amazing. Well, think about this and think about all the factors and the angle that that person may be coming from. There might be somebody else out there that can give you fifty thousand dollars for that same that same um, volume of timber. So, again, it is tough to put a price on a tree. Um, real quick fun fact here: that walnut on the right in Clayton County was bid at about fifty-four thousand bucks. Now that's a freak of nature; it's almost a perfect tree, but um, just kind of an interesting. That's a that's a darn expensive tree right there. All right. So there's really no one place to go look up the current price uh, of timber. Uh, you, unless you're dealing with loggers, unless you're dealing with um, professional foresters every day and log buyers, there's really no way to, to get a good uh, grip on what stuff is selling for. This table was provided to me by Gretchen Klein, who's a private consulting forester. Again, the kind of person you need to be contacting right off the bat uh, in southern Iowa. And she puts these tables together about three times a year. Uh, and this is really the average, you know, average, average, average price for standing timber sold in southern Iowa um, around September of 2020. And as you can see, we've got a clear leader in value in the state, and that's black walnut. White oak is next, and then everything else is fairly similar, um, getting down to about the 10 cent range with cottonwood. Still valuable, but you can see the difference between black walnut and some of the other species. And this is per board foot. This is dollars per board foot. If you can visualize what a board foot is, um, it is a piece of wood, a volume of wood, that's 12 inches by 12 inches by 1 inch thick. So that's a board foot of timber. So this is the prices, the average price is going per board foot. And there's, again, it's going to be a big range. It depends on all kinds of things that a lot of folks can't pick up on unless they have a very trained eye. Um, these two folks in the picture here are timber buyers. They can pick up a defect through the bark. They can see, they almost have x-ray vision. So again, a valuable tree is going to have four clean faces. So north, south, east, west. It's going to have a number of 16-foot logs. Um, so these folks are looking at these defects right here that you and, my, you and myself might even just overlook. But they're seeing the defects there, and they can really uh, put a, a, a solid price on what they're going to get uh, from that log. So. Again, a lot of stuff goes into it. That's why it's so critical to work with a forester. They're going to be your guide to really get the biggest return um, from that timber sale. So some quick do's and don'ts of timber harvest. 
obviously, I've said this a lot today, but do work with the forester. Kind of remember the jingle, call before you cut. Um, they're going to really get you the best, the true value for that timber. Um, they're going to come in, they're going to mark the trees to be harvested. They're going to help you solicit a variety of, uh, a number of bids to get the, the highest possible uh, price. And they're going to follow through um, with that harvest to ensure quality, to make sure that the proper trees are being cut, to make sure that they're not rutting up roads, not that loggers are looking to do this, but they're going to work and, and kind of advise or oversee the harvest to make sure that, that quality is being maintained, the trees that are marked are being harvested, and you're getting what, what you uh, agreed, agreed to from that, from that timber buyer. And again, this harvest, you should only harvest if it's part of a management plan. Uh, for so many reasons, but two big ones is, you know, without a plan, how do you even know what you're selling? How do you know the inventory of what's out there? How do you know the condition? How do you know if it's financially mature, financially ready to sell? Uh, so again, if you're going to harvest, it's got to be part of a management plan. So if somebody comes knocking on your door looking to buy timber, take a step back, do some thinking, get a plan put together, and you're going you're gonna to increase your profits um, significantly. Do work with a bonded timber buyer. So um, in the state of Iowa, to purchase timber, you must be bonded. So again, that's a great place to start. If someone's looking to log your place, look them up. Look them up on the IDNR bonded timber buyer list, which I'll provide that resource in the email that follows. Uh, and just some quick definition, timber buyer versus forester. A lot of people get those confused. A timber buyer is somebody that's strictly interested in buying and marketing timber. Where a forester is more interested in sustainability, management, planning, and uh, creating the forest management plan with you and working with you to implement that plan over time. So the timber buyer is kind of a snapshot interaction in, in, your, in your overall harvest or your overall management plan where the forester is there to really guide you through the whole process. They're invested in the whole process. They're invested in the long term. One's not better than the other if they just have different roles. So uh, forester is definitely different than a timber buyer. Do get sealed bids. Do you have a written contract and do still standing? So again, the bids are going to get you the best price. Having a written contract, have everything outlined before the first cut is made is critical. Don't cut first and figure out the details later. Have everything written down. Again, on our website, we're going to have a template that can help you set up a timber sale contract, so a kind of a guide on where to start. But always get that contract down, get exactly what you want, get a good understanding, then cut. Timber harvest don'ts. Don't, again, sell on the spur of the moment. It's tempting. There's big sums of money being, being offered. Take the time, do the research, get the bids, work with a forester. You're going to be um, ahead of the game if you do that. Don't high grade. And again, if you're working with a forester, no worries. This is not going to happen. A high grade is when folks come in and they cut every single one of your best trees all at once. So you've essentially removed the great genetics out of your timber uh, and you've got really nothing to work with in the future. You're one and done, um, essentially, with harvest. So, but if you don't, if you leave good genetics in there and harvest sustainably, you're going to be able to harvest and, you're, and you're, your kids are going to be able to harvest far, far down the road for, for decades and centuries. So again, no high grade. It's like going into a hog barn and taking out the best genetics and Letting everything else to breathe. You're, you're just going to be left with nothing to work with. Don't sell on a diameter limit. So again, don't have somebody come in and say, hey, I'll take every tree over 14 inches in diameter. Um, diameter really doesn't dictate harvest timing. Uh, it's all about condition and the potential. If a tree species, if a particular tree is still giving you a 10% increase in value every year, it might not be ready to harvest. You need to leave it out there for another 5, 10 years to really maximize that. So. Don't go straight on diameter. And again, working with a forester, having a plan that's going to be written out very clearly. Don't sell on shares. This is complicated, but I just want to put the word out there as shares. So if you ever see don't, you know, selling on shares should be a big red flag. Um, that's kind of, for example, say, hey, I'll come in, I'll cut the logs out, I'll ship them to the mill, I'll bring them back, I'll bring a, a, a price back to you and we'll split it 60-40. Heck, I'll even give you a 70-30. Um, that sounds great, but you're really not getting the right um, value or the true value for your timber that way. It's complicated, but I just want to put that term out there, selling on shares, avoid it. 
it's kind of a, a buy now, pay later thing. And it really doesn't reflect the logging cost to value, timber value ratio. So again, we've got some, on the Iowa DNR website, there is a cool article on explaining why not to purchase on shares. All right, well again, that was a crash course and kind of some hot topics that folks often ask me about. Um, a lot of times, folks really don't know the vast amount of resources that are actually out there to, to help guide them through the process. I know folks are strapped for time. Uh, there's a lot of folks, uh, professionals out there that can help you achieve your goal for your timber. Um, two places to start, the Iowa State Natural Resources Extension webpage. Uh, we've got fisheries, forestry, water quality. Uh, again, there's a, a, a forestry page within this, but a really, really good place to start natural resources extension website. The Iowa DNR also has a forestry web page, all kinds of great stuff there. These two combined I think should be your first place. Uh, these are going to get you the professional forester contacts, both the Iowa DNR, the public foresters, and also the private forestry consultants. Um, you're going to have connections with forestry contractors. So these are the folks that do kind of the, the management work. Uh, the tree planting, the herbicide application, the forest thinning. Uh, you're going to be connected to the Iowa Bonded Timber Buyer List. You know, look up those folks that are offering to buy your trees. As well as all kinds of technical resources on forest management, tree planting, pruning, tree ID, uh, invasive species ID and control. This one's super popular with grazers is the chemical control of woody vegetation publication. Uh, what chemicals to use and when. Uh, especially in like, you know, pastures or woodland edge situations. Uh, timber sale guidance, kind of uh, giving you a rundown of what goes into a timber sale and, and what, uh, what you should be looking out for to maximize your returns. And then also pointing you in the direction of financial resources. There's a lot of financial resources out there to help you with forest management. Uh, for example, the Environmental Quality Incentives Programs, EQIP, and the Conservation Reserve Program, or CRP, just to name two. And then also a, uh, information on the Forest Reserve Program, so kind of a neat program in Iowa, um, which is essentially you don't pay tax on forest land that meets certain criteria. So this is just a starter. This is the tip of the iceberg. I wanted to provide these two uh, really great websites to you. Watch your email uh, for the e-resource sheet. There's going to be a kind of all kinds of more specific uh, links in here uh, to kind of help you all get started. And again, I'm going to end kind of, well, not kind of end. Um, I love getting out and meeting folks. And I really am excited to uh, connect with the grazers here today. If you've got an interesting cattle operation with, with an active forest management um, component to it, please let me know. I travel all over the state. I'd love to come see what you got going on. I love gator rides. I tell this to people all the time. I want to get out and see, see what you're doing, uh, see what you're successes are, see what you're struggling with, and see how Iowa State Extension can help you uh, achieve your goal there. So again, really want to thank you all uh, for the opportunity. I want to thank uh, this conference for having me here. And I encourage you to get out and know and maximize the true value of your forest. Again, my name is Billy Beck. Hit me up with any questions you have at the email or uh, on social media here. And I really, again, appreciate you all having me. Have a great day.